optimized in such cases to hold government data. Next, the infrastructure which processes the cloud. Advantages of such cloud infrastructure is that we are able to secure the master copy and we only push out the images, we only push out the machine image of any data stored over the cloud. This makes sure that if any change happens to the image which is unauthorized or if the image itself is lost, the master would be secure. This makes sure that disaster recovery would be safe. At the same time, application multi-tenancy limits the amount of security. There are many, many customers who would be accessing these images. Through these images, they might, they might be able to get access to the master's copy as well. And cloud always relies on hypervisor. Without a hypervisor, cloud cannot be used. Without a good bandwidth, cloud computing cannot be used properly. Performance will be very bad. Without a good network, without good infrastructure, cloud will not be able to be very successful in performance. We in India as a developing nation, we face a lot of infrastructure problems as far as network and bandwidth is concerned. Developed countries have very good bandwidth, very good infrastructure, but we as a developing nation, we are not able to leverage the cloud because of our limitations in infrastructure. This could be due to many reasons, one of which is the complex, which is complacence on the part of our government in giving very high quality, high speed networks. So, Without hypervisors, without good bandwidth, making use of cloud will be very limited. And isolating such processes through sandboxes is again a very big challenge. This has to be done in a very competitive way to provide very good infrastructure security. Next come cloud support services. Yes. When a service is provided through cloud, there would be additional support services like security controls such as authorization, authentication, login, firewalls, intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems. These would also be provided as support services on demand. The challenges would be, in spite of providing these security controls, we still would be faced with additional risk when these support services are integrated with customer application. The applications themselves might be insecure over the cloud. So adding these support services might be an overhead again. Now, when such support services like security as a service for any given service on the cloud is provided, we need a certification and accreditation as a separate security application. And there is also a change, there is also a challenge of frequently updating or patching the code for such security controls. If a provider is giving a security software along with his regular service, then the provider also has to frequently update or patch or make sure that his customers are frequently updating their own security software. Until these updates are installed properly, their services which are being accessed might be susceptible for attacks. So it is very important, very, very important for all cloud services to regularly update their codes so that they are safe from regular attacks. The last but not the least comes the cloud network and perimeter security. As far as the organization's network and security is concerned, the cloud provides very good advantage. By its own nature, cloud is distributed. So it will also be able to provide a denial of service protection in a distributed way. 
it would be able to install security controls throughout the network, throughout the cloud, and hence be able to prevent DOS attacks or denial, distributed denial of service attacks. It also provides virtual LAN capabilities and perimeter security, which secures the perimeter and network of any organization using intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, firewalls, authentication, and so on. The only challenge for perimeter security would be virtual zoning and application mobility. The future trends in cloud and cloud applications are mobile in nature. Future employees of organizations would be working through their mobile devices. They would not be happy sitting on a desktop and working through corporate applications. BYOD is a big concept now. Bring your own device is a concept which will be hugely accepted in future. Gartner predicts that by year 2014, 90% of organizations would allow their employees to bring their own gadgets to access corporate applications and work on their own gadgets. This application mobility provides huge convenience, but it also comes with a lot of security problems. We would not be knowing what kind of applications the employee accesses through its device when he goes back home. This provides huge security implications. So virtual zoning with such application mobility is a challenge over the cloud. These are the five tiers of cloud security. These are actually advantages in one way. At the same time, they are challenges as well. So to summarize the advantages, cloud provides the data which is fragmented. It has greater resiliency. It is also cost effective. At the same time, it also has the challenge of managing multiple tenants, of managing isolation, of managing quality of service guarantees. Unless we have hypervisor, unless we have a good bandwidth, unless we provide encryption for all the ways in which cloud services are deployed, cloud would not succeed 